felt comfortable with the sales side of it, with the business side, and so that, that kind of got me into the business. And that little carpet company throughout, I went to college at the University of Michigan, that carpet company got bigger, and by the time I was a senior, we had five universities under contract, and you know, I was you know, at the time making like $100,000 a year, which uh, I say to people to this day, that's the richest I've ever been. When you're a college kid and you have that much money, it's virtually <laughs> unlimited disposable. <laughs> um, so, so uh, and, and, then, and then toward the end of that, I, my a guy approached me one day, he had this little business uh, trying to take this character called Willie the Wolverine and turn it into a, a, a t-shirt company. And I thought, you know, I was winding this carpet company down, I thought, let's give it a shot. And that got me into, into licensing apparel. And that company grew. I started law school. Um, I didn't. I didn't want to go to law school, but my parents, the deal they had made me was, you can. They would pay for college, uh, but I had to get a graduate degree. Their their attitude was, uh, which is, is you know fitting for this room. Their attitude was, uh, you, at some point you'll need it, and even though you may not want to get it, just just get it. So my deal with them was, I would. I would. If I got it, I would go, but I wouldn't. Uh, I would still keep working the whole time. So I, got, I was lucky that I got into the University of Michigan's law school, and I, um, and I was building this company, which actually got to be pretty decent size. We were doing a couple million dollars a year in revenue, and I had a chance to sell it, and I sold it. Graduated um, law school, and then uh, looked around for a business to buy. It's when I connected with a guy named Brad Keywell, which has been a partner of mine now for 20 years. And we, um, we found a company up in Wisconsin that, that also was in the licensed apparel business. And so at the time, this was like maybe 94, you know, LBOs were kind of fad, and so we did what most people were doing. We borrowed a bunch of money, and we bought a company. And from 94 to 99, I ran that business, and uh, we built it up from about two million in sales to about 20 million. And, and then the thing completely collapsed. Um, it collapsed in part because we were selling at the time uh, professional licensed apparel, NBA, NFL, you know, that kind of stuff. And the leagues were changing how they were licensing companies. They were going to more master licenses with people like Nike and Reebok. And it also collapsed because we had just we just put too much debt on the business. We had too much inventory, we and fashion trends were changing and going against us. And so as that business was literally falling apart and there was nothing we could do to stop it. Um, we, we decided to, uh, to, to kind of make a list of the things we liked and hated in business, especially Brad made a list. And we realized, we made this list of things we liked and hated about business, that we effectively hated every business. <laughs> uh, I mean, we just made a list on the con side, and it was like inventory, cap back, it was literally like a list, retail, I mean, just a list of everything that you hated. And that kind of led us to technology, right? We wanted a business that, um, that was uh, the goal at the time was we wanted to celebrate EBITDA and revenue generation. So we wanted to basically have to do nothing once we made the sale. Uh, and the, internet, the internet was taking off, and so we thought, let's, let's jump on that bandwagon. And so in March of 99, we wrote a business plan for a company called Starbelly.com, which was supposed to essentially disintermediate the promotional product supply chain. Um, this was the big fad in 99, was trying to disintermediate every supply chain. And we had this really interesting view by virtue of the fact that we'd been in uh, licensed apparel for a while, that we could see how things were decorated. And so we got all excited about how mugs and pens and you know, golf balls were decorated. And we thought if we could use technology to do that and move salespeople, we could save a bunch of money and, and, and our customers would love it. So we launched that business in March of 99. In May of 99, we raised a million and a half bucks at an eight million from a very nice guy that had money to burn and was uh, coming off a tech sale. Uh, and then in uh, July of 99, we raised $8 million and a, four, and a 32 pre, pre valuation from a, a firm called uh, Chase Capital Partners, which now is part of uh, JP Morgan. And then about four months later, we went out to raise a round of capital, would have been our third round. And we ended up getting term sheets for about $300 million at a valuation of around $250 million. Um, and that was at the height of the insanity. That was like November of 99. Now, meanwhile, at the time, we had uh, virtually no revenue, maybe 
$200,000 in total, maybe. And we were losing money in ways that were inhuman. And all we had become good at was hiring. And yet the business was skyrocketing in value. The more people we hired, the better our team was, the higher the valuation went. Because essentially the, higher, the bigger the promise was. So we, won't, we, um, we, 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 uh, we're about to do this, this round of financing, and then a company called Halo knocked on our door and said, don't close the round, let us buy you. And so we sold the company for, at the time, it was like $240 million. And that was after about eight months of, from business plan to sale was about eight months. So that, um, that's, you know, that would have been the American dream, except for, uh, except for you know, the great reality, which is, Unfortunately, nothing in life is that easy. So the company who acquired us was itself a failed roll-up. And so within a year of them buying us, all the stock we got was essentially worthless. So I'm 29 years old at the time, uh, I think maybe 30. I had just gotten $70 million in stock, public company in stock. So I am happy. And, uh, and that's the roller coaster up, and then by the time I could even counted, it had all imploded. The, the market crashed in maybe March of 2000 or something like that. And then uh, Halo imploded six months later and eventually about chapter 11 and all that was gone. Uh, and so here I am, now I'm 30 years old or maybe 31, I think 30. And um, I had just, uh, my, my the, the apparel company had gone under, that was a disaster. My uh, Star Belly, which was supposed to be this rocket and this huge kind of lottery ticket, that had just blown up, and that had now gone under. I'm now being sued by almost everybody who um, you know, is an American citizen. Because, uh, you know, we have these two failures. Our, our one, any time a public company goes down, it inevitably ends in lots of litigation. So, um, so I'm in this mess, and I said, you know, what, what better thing to do than start another company? Uh, right, keep going.